I think the positive catalyst for Tesla, and we hinted at this in the tease, but are this neural network uh, kind of update, it, de it, it debuted about its full self-driving. In fact, I think it led you to downgrade Mobileye, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, for those of us who missed it, what's the significance of its recent launch there? Uh, well, just uh, we didn't downgrade Mobileye. We actually read it our buy rating there. And so what happened was within autonomous vehicle circles, what Elon Musk did a couple of weeks ago in terms of his live stream is that he demonstrated that Tesla has a neural network that's enabling its full self-driving in version 12. And what that means is, is that the system takes photons in, and in other words, video images, and controls out. And in the middle of that is artificial intelligence. There is zero software code that's involved in making sure the vehicle goes from one place to another. It learns on its own to navigate its environment. Now, a company like Mobileye and a company like Aurora that we cover as well use a hybrid approach, meaning that, sure, they have some, some machine learning in there and some artificial intelligence, but within that system, they also think that hard coding software instructions is the best way to go. And in a thoughtful blog post uh, late last week, Mobileye CEO came out and explained his logic behind having that software code embedded. Aurora believes that the same approach is going to win. And frankly, in our recent note, we said, we don't know who's going to win this race. Will it be Elon Musk? Will it be Mobileye or Aurora? It's hard to doubt either of these companies and either of their CEOs and uh, thought leaders at the companies. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's a fascinating debate. Who is going to win, pure artificial intelligence or neural networks? or a hybrid approach between the two. Yeah, so that, that, that's a really fa it's a really interesting question. Can you imagine the phone calls Mobileye CEO, Professor Amnon Shashwa got the evening of August 25th, 2023? If you didn't know, Mobileye is an Israeli company that was spun off from Intel last year. It has collaborations with many OEMs in the automotive world, such as the likes of the Volkswagen, Pulsar, Zeker, and Porsche. With a lack of pedigree in those car company software divisions, legacy auto manufacturers feel the need to turn outwards in their search for driver assistance features and eventually self-driving. This is where Mobileye comes in. They specialize in the creation of software and hardware to enable autonomous driving to a certain extent. The industry is littered with examples of in-house attempts at autonomy being shelved for pared down driver assistance offerings, and in some cases, whole software divisions being restructured. As the world is ushered to the age of driverless cars by Tesla's initiatives with full self-driving, a game of catch-up is required, but a battle of survivability is being played out in parallel. The reason Amnon Shashua might have been fielding calls on that fateful night of August 25th is because that was the day that Tesla's end-to-end -end neural net full self-driving version 12 was debuted to the public. I wouldn't know if I should call it a beta or alpha because it's so early in its development, but even if I didn't add a qualifier to the name, you might believe it was soon to be a released product. As long as you were there that night watching Elon Musk's live stream, OEMs and startup CEOs across the globe might have thought the same or at least realized its potential to further pressure their forays into the world of autonomy. The newest version of full self-driving put on a display that was close to perfection, if perfection is just driving like a skilled human. As of today, it's likely better than most of us. Full self-driving 12 as a project started less than a year ago within the FSC division of Tesla. The current version of the product, FSD 11, the one in cars now, utilizes traditional coded software made up of hundreds of thousands of lines of that code. The advent of ChatGPT last year got the engineers thinking over there in Tesla's Texas headquarters. Why can't we use a model to learn off the millions of cars in our fleet in the millions of video clips you already have and turn FSD into an end-to-end -end self driving system? If you can throw a bunch of words at a language model to spit out words back to the user, why can't we throw a bunch of pixels at a model to output steering and pedal commands? Well, it's obvious they figured out that you could, and they put it to work. What might be Tesla's ChatGP moment must have soured the mood in Mobileye, because their CEO put out a lengthy blog defending their own approach to self-driving and mocking the ChatGP moniker itself. I'd like to go over that blog with you now. It's titled, Are We on the Edge of a ChatGP Moment for Autonomous Driving? I don't think many people would argue that ChatGPT itself has shown to regress in quality, have moments where it makes up information to satisfy a query, or just is straight up wrong. ChatGPT is not self-driving though. I think anyone can agree with that. And the failures of a large language model doesn't mean we should all give up on ChatGPT. Or should we pack up OpenAI into a box and start studying English literature as hard as we can to write better essays and craft compelling resumes? The idea that Tesla is chasing their own tail with the pursuit of an end-to-end -end self-driving system and that they should be ashamed of it? It doesn't really make sense. 
If you think Tesla is wasting their time, why tell them? Why tell them they're wasting their time? If you're competing with Tesla, you should let them waste their time. Wouldn't you want them to spend billions of dollars on compute only to find out it doesn't work? Well, if you look at the underlying motivations of the blog post, you start to understand this post isn't for you or for me. This blog was written to calm the nerves of large stakeholders in Mobileye and all of their shareholders. Just put yourself in the shoes of an executive working at one of their partner companies and your associate just sent you a link to a tweet that has a live stream recording of this very average, likely one to two year old Model X powered by a self-driving computer that was theorized in 2016, started production in 2018, and is handling inference for a model design in December of 2022. You didn't even hear of a consumer facing AI product until the fall of last year, and now one of your major competitors is fielding a self-driving system powered by AI? When you signed up for your partnership with Mobileye, they told you, yeah, we use AI too, but now you're seemingly overpaying for a system with a bunch of doodads added on top of it. What do you do if you're that executive? You pick up the phone. Throughout Elon Musk's history of innovation, he pushed the envelope, and in terms of FSD, that envelope is a purely neural net approach to autonomy. Mobileye CEO believes in redundancy, having multiple paths to achieve the same goal, all in the same system, where Tesla has done everything they can to simplify their hardware associated with full self-driving. Amnon's Mobileye has three ways to sense the environment, cameras, radar, and LiDAR, which are enhanced with maps. Redundancy at what cost though? The argument is reliability and safety, but why can an end-to-end approach ultimately be safer, and not only that, be much, much cheaper? Tesla can win the battle on cost and scale alone, and Mobileye knows that. If you need to provide OEMs with cameras, custom chips and boards, software tailored to a wide range of vehicles, multiple radars per car, and LiDAR as well, all of this at a smaller scale, how do you make this affordable to the consumer? We won't know who the winner of the battle would be, but from the looks of it, all the legacy OEMs will prop up this company. But what you do know is, Amnon is too focused on his competition, where Elon doesn't even think about the competition. If you continue to innovate at a quick pace, competition isn't part of the calculation. The gap is evident when Amnon feels compelled to write a blog post, which in essence is attacking the viability of Tesla's full self-driving, which might seem unprompted until you think about the millions of cars being made every year with paltry and buggy software. I'd like to leave you with a clip of Professor Amnon Shashwa answering a question during a presentation from this past summer. That question is, can a model for a self-driving car be safe? So the second is, is a kind of a self-driving cars can that be aligned? The answer is yes. This is what Chai told you about in his, in his talk. Uh, third, the AI 